in the last stream, we were working on completing the basic tech questline and getting our very first basic technium ingot, which we crafted inside of our advanced auto crafting table, which is now capable of making even more of these if we put all of the ingredients into a chest above this crafting table. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to automate the crafting of this for a little while, mostly due to our current rudimentary logistics. These conveyor belts are not particularly great at moving items around. They get the job done for a situation like this, but because we can't limit where items go, if we try and automate with these conveyor belts, I think we're most likely to just end up with items spewing everywhere. And so for the time being, I think we're just gonna kind of plow forward into the advanced tech quest line, which we did start a little bit in the last episode. And all I've really done between streams is I've taken some of the aluminum that we have. We've got 103 here and 95 iron. The reason we've got more aluminum than iron is because a little while ago, I took 36 aluminum, crafted four aluminum blocks and placed those aluminum blocks on top of our aluminum miner to allow us to produce that aluminum faster going forward. With the four aluminum capstones, we can now produce one aluminum ore every five seconds, making it the fastest thing that we are currently producing. The reason why I started with the aluminum is because now that we're getting more of it in, we can then use it to make even more capstones for all of our other stuff going forward. And in fact, I think the very first thing that I'm going to do right at the start here is quickly craft just two more of these and use those to upgrade our iron as well so that we can start getting iron just that little bit faster because as we progress on today through the iron and aluminum quest line and then into the big machines quest line we are going to need a fair bit of iron and a fair bit of aluminum one thing we should do right i think at the start of today's episode is probably get ourselves an iron pickaxe because this cobblestone pickaxe is pretty slow and is also basically broken at this point. So I think real quick, if we uh, pop down here and of course deposit that uh, aluminum ore into our jumbo furnace, we do have basically a hundred iron here. And so I think we can spare three iron for a quick upgrade to our pickaxe. And I think the very first thing that we should start working on here is getting ourselves a blast furnace because the blast furnace is going to allow us to get steel. Steel is then going to allow us to make steel blocks and then steel blocks are going to allow us to get the research paper for redstone which then of course unlocks redstone ore. We can set up another miner for redstone ore, and then that is going to open up a lot of the pack to us. We can start working on some machines, we can start working on some power, and we can of course start working towards the next technium ingot, that being this advanced technium ingot. And so in order to make ourselves a blast furnace, much like with the coke oven behind us, we need to get 27 blast brick. Thankfully, the blast brick is not particularly difficult for us at this stage of the game. We need four aluminum ingots, four brick, and one coke brick to make nine blast brick. We're going to have to do this three times in order to get 27 blast brick. And so we need to get 12 aluminum along with 12 brick, which I think we probably already have in here. We do indeed. Speaking of which, I did notice that up here, the only quest we haven't completed in the entirety of the basic tech quest line is this one right here for the splitting conveyor belt. Now we don't necessarily need a splitting conveyor belt, but if we craft one, that does complete the call and lapis chapter, and that kind of fully completes this basic tech section of the quest book, so we can collapse that fully and, uh, and focus solely now on the advanced tech section. Uh, for those wondering, this just allows you to split a uh, conveyor belt into uh, into two other conveyor belts. You can do this and then have belts going off in uh, in either direction and it'll just split the items 50-50, uh, which is uh, is pretty nice. I'll divide them up and I think it's random which way it goes. I know it looks like they're all going that way, but you'll see some of them do go the other way, which is uh, is sometimes useful. But uh, again, the randomness makes it tricky to, to do any kind of real automation with these belts. Either way, the only thing we're missing now is more cook break. And as we saw in the last episode, all we need to do to get more cook break is craft some grout dust around some regular bricks. So we'll go ahead and grab one, two, three of these, and then we should have a bunch of grout over above our grout miner over here. We can, of course, take that grout and throw it into our now fully stacked jumbo furnace, and we should be able to get just a ton of grout dust from that. In fact, you do get two for one here, and we really don't need that much, and so I'll probably put the majority of this bank and just smelt up this 16 grout into 32 grout dust. Cool. 
Now, one thing that the Twitch chat has been asking me to do actually is place down a trap door next to the jumbo furnace because right now we have just a hole in the ground and we have tried to fill the hole, but then whenever I fill the hole, I need to access that hopper occasionally if something rogue manages to find its way in there. And so the solution temporarily is to do something like this so that if we need to access the hopper, we can, but we can also close the trap door to kind of nullify the risk of us falling down into the void, which would be fantastic. So let me uh, quickly dump some of this extra junk that we don't need into our chest and then back over here. Let's see if we can't make 27 blast brick uh, just as soon as we make a couple of coke bricks, boom, and boom, nice. And so much like with the coke oven, this is made in exactly the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then using our iron wand, we can go two and three. Once you've got a three by three cube of blast brick down, you just right click with the engineer's hammer and we have a blast furnace. So here we can now turn our iron into steel. So if we put the iron into the blast furnace, that is gonna smelt into steel. Now. I do believe we can use coal in here. Never mind, we totally cannot. That is fine. We might be able to use charcoal in here, potentially. Let me give that a try real quick. I think sometimes charcoal does work. What is definitely going to work though, yeah, charcoal does work, although charcoal's a little awkward. What definitely works though is coal coke. And so if we put the coal coke in here, that is going to allow us to create more steel per coal coke than we would get per charcoal. You'll see here, we only got two steel from one charcoal, whereas we're gonna get hopefully quite a lot more steel from one cold coke. You'll see this is taking a lot longer to uh, to burn through, which is good. And again, big thank you to Ben here because this blast furnace is substantially faster than it normally is. Normally this machine is painfully slow, and so it's very nice to see it uh, working at a reasonable speed. So that is gonna make us the steel, and it does look like it is the same speed, whether or not you do ingots or blocks, so it's not really worth doing in block form, but. Uh, if you want to do a full stack of iron blocks, then I guess it would be more efficient. So steel blocks are coming in. Once we get four of those, we can then unlock redstone. Uh, we also need four basic technium though. And so I guess while we wait for this to smelt through the remaining three blocks of iron into three blocks of steel, we can look at getting a little bit more basic technium. I am gonna bookmark the, uh, the tiers of technium that we're currently working on because we are gonna shortly start working on the advanced technium. For now though, we just need to get more smooth stone, more clay, more bronze, some coal coke, treated wood, and lapis. I think most of that we have. Lapis we have, coal coke we've got a fair amount of. We can keep taking our jerry can out here and using that to craft up more treated wood. I did do that one or two times between streams and so we do have a fair bit of treated wood available in here for us to use. We also have lapis, of course, which you love to see. We've got clay, which is fantastic. We do have some smooth stone, and so we're actually pretty close here. We're just missing that bronze. We have two bronze there, two bronze there. I think we need eight in total though, so we are a little light on that still, but we do have copper and tin available to us, and if we throw both of those into the uh, jumbo furnace, that should get us a decent amount of bronze fairly quickly. I am gonna bulk make some of the bronze here and try and bulk make some of the uh, basic technium, just so we have it ready to go and we don't have to keep kind of manually crafting it over and over again. Can I, oh, I can't shift click in more than one set because we don't have enough coal cook on us. That is fine. Let's leave a little bit in there, but then take the rest out here. How much can I make? Only two more, eh? Again, what's our limiting factor here? It's clay and smooth stone. So there's kind of two things we need to do here. Clay is not a problem. We've got a clay miner. We can go and get a ton of clay. One thing that we definitely should do, though, that we've not yet done, we could do with getting another stone miner, another miner for regular stone. And then if we add that to the list of things that is being smelted by the jumbo furnace, we could then just put down a storage drawer for smooth stone. And that's going to allow us to just passively start generating the stuff so we don't have to manually make it whenever we want to make more basic technium. All right, so not too long later, we now have another miner making stone, and that stone is running around all the way to our jumbo furnace and being transformed. I'm not quite sure how some coal got up there, but uh, it is being transformed, of course, into a smooth stone, which is then being deposited into its own storage drawer. And so now, if we were to quickly go and grab some clay, we should be able to make the last basic technium that we need in order to unlock redstone. Boom. And boom, nice, we've got 11 basic Technium ingots. Over here, our steel is done, fantastic. And so as per usual here, if we grab yet another one of these blank research papers, we should now be able to craft up the book 
for redstone. And of course, hand that in over here. Boom and boom. And now, you guessed it, we can actually get redstone fragments from the colored stone. I am going to take them up on the offer here to disable anything that isn't redstone. I don't want anything else out of this colored stone because our inventory is already filling up with aluminum fragments and iron fragments and copper fragments and tin fragments. We don't need any more fragments in our system here. All I want is some light gray colored stone and I guess enough redstone fragments to get the 36 redstone all that we're going to need to set up, you guessed it, yet another miner, which should be a little easier now in that we are already making stone. I guess the only trouble is that we're not banking up on stone because of the fact that currently all of our stone is being smelted into smooth stone. And so, you know, it could be that we actually might have a use for the splitting conveyor belt. What I might do here, I might make yet another storage drawer, and right back at the beginning, I might see about splitting the regular stone and having some of it go to a drawer and some of it get turned into smooth stone. That's gonna allow us to start banking up on both regular stone and smooth stone so that at some point in the future, we can uh, you know, hopefully use both and we don't have to you know, wait around or smelt cobblestone into stone whenever we, we need it. So I'm kind of thinking how I wanna do this. I might have to move this extractor to the side and make it a little different to how all of the others work. But if we did something like this with, I don't think you can have the splitter going diagonally. And so you know what, no, hold on. We're gonna put this on the bank like this. We're then gonna have that come down diagonally, which is gonna be somewhat awkward, but then we can kind of have this loop around, I think. And <laughs> this is way more awkward, I think, than it needs to be. But if we do this and this and this, we can have our stone come down, go around, and then at some point around here, we want to split it to either go into here. And I think this is fine. If we do this, and I think this will work if we put this here, I'm pretty sure that's gonna do what we want it to do. It probably didn't need, it definitely didn't need to be this convoluted. I could probably have put the uh, extracting conveyor on the side here. Let's make sure that those are going the right way, which is like that. This will work, I think. So uh, the first batch is gonna go one way into the drawer, and uh, we will go ahead and lock these drawers, of course, to make sure they uh, only contain stone in the future. But then the other's gonna go the other way, and that's gonna divvy up between the two, which is, is perfect. And so now if we need stone in the future, we can grab it from there. Of course, for now, we don't have uh, a nice backlog of stone, and so we are going to have to grab a little bit of cobblestone. Thankfully, though, as per usual, we do have a very fast jumbo furnace, and so we should be able to get a, a bunch of regular stone smelted up nice and quickly. Fantastic. And once we have that stone, we can then, of course, craft that with our redstone fragments to get us redstone ore. I'll take as much as we can. Of course, we do only need 36 to actually get the miner up and running. Uh, the other 23, though, we can just throw directly into the jumbo furnace. I do think I clogged this up with stone. I did indeed. And then from there, we can get one more storage drawer, add it to the wall above our iron, and that is going to give us access to unlimited redstone. Now, I do think that redstone might require the next tier of frame. Let me check that real quick. If we want to make this yeah, we need tier five support frames, which are made with iron ingots. That's not gonna be a problem. We do have plenty of iron ingots, but it does mean we are gonna have to make a, a fresh batch here, and we need a, a total of 36 of these support frames. So back over here, let's do this and this, and then let's see if we can't get 36 of these tier five support frames. And there we go, once we have 36 tier five support frames, all we need to do now is go and uh, place this down, I guess, right next to our stone. I'm going to put the uh, other tier of support frames away because uh, otherwise this structure placer is going to be tempted to put down the wrong stuff, which is not what we're after. And it would be ideal as well if we had some oak slabs. One thing I do want to do now, I think, is unlock the chipped mod. Now that we have access to iron, we can spend a couple of our tech books here and we can spend some stone, some logs, and a paper. That's actually completely fine. Let me take one of these. We need some stone bricks. That's completely fine as well. We have stone coming in now, so that's not a problem. And of course, over here, one, one, two, three, four logs should be everything for the chipped book. And 
chipped is just going to give us if we go to uh, at chipped right now there's nothing there but over in here if we do this we now have access to all of these custom versions of all of these different blocks and specifically i quite like the alternative uh, smooth stones so if we type in smooth stone um, i quite like these alternate smooth stones and because we're making smooth stone automatically now we could start to utilize some of this smooth stone inside of the mason's workbench the mason's workbench here requires two iron one clay one crafting table two logs and a brick i think we have most of that we are missing a crafting table which we can definitely make with our remaining planks we have plenty of them and then as far as the logs and the clay go clay we can craft down easy and the logs we have as well fantastic that gets us the mason table and this kind of works like a chisel if you've played with the chisel mod before i'll put it down over here for the time being um ideally i did want that kind of one block over so let me quickly give that one more try here like that uh, this is going to allow us to retexture some of these so for example we could turn some of our uh, bricks the, the benefit over the chisel here is that you can just uh, do this as many times as you want there's no durability on it but you get some nicer looking blocks that we can then use around the base to uh, kind of break up this wooden monotony that we currently have going on we got a lot of wood down at the moment but uh, now we can run basically any of the blocks that we currently have through this mason table and turn them into other blocks we can do the same with like cobblestone and stone and uh, and any other kind of solid blocks that we have certain things are going to require different tables i think chips has quite a few tables at the uh, the top here the botanist table the glass blower table the carpenter's table the loom table the mason table the alchemy table and the tinkering table but i think for us for the time being the uh, mason's table is going to do the trick and going to allow us to uh, try and make this base look a little bit nicer for now though let's quickly go and see if we can't get this redstone miner added to the setup all right so redstone is now up and running we've got the tier 5 support frames i have put down four more aluminum blocks here which also has the added benefit of also speeding up our stone as well because we already had the caps here and we needed four more for the redstone but the redstone is now coming in nice and fast and so now we just need to actually get one redstone in our inventory and that is going to unlock the next chapter of the quest book so we'll claim all of these we'll put you back we do already have 17 that's coming in nice and regularly and now we have access to the big machines quest line because if we take a look at the advanced technium most of what we need here is made using a metal press so the steel gears have to be made in a metal press the aluminum sheet metal is made from aluminum plates which you guessed it have to be made with a metal press and then other than that the only other things we need are invar ingots lava bottles and basic technium basic technium we already have lava bottles we can get with a bottling machine which is also another machine that's in the uh, big machines quest line it's down here and that's going to allow us to start bottling up fluids it's also potentially going to allow us to start making uh, buckets of creosote more easily because we can just pump the creosote into the bottling machine and then maybe use that in crafting although i think we can pump the creosote directly into an assembler the assembler is a big multi-block auto crafter it's more expensive than these auto crafting tables but it does have the added benefit of being able to craft with fluids and so i think we're probably going to want to pump the creosote into an assembler and then use that to auto craft uh, our planks into treated wood which is going to be useful the metal press though does require power and so before we begin making a metal press which is also going to be oh it's not gonna be expensive because we get these as a reward interesting what do i need for this i need 36 redstone four technium and a research paper we don't quite have 36 redstone yet, but that is coming in slowly but surely. The jumbo furnace, we can maybe do like a chest and a hopper as opposed to just using that hopping conveyor belt because now if we ever end up with a full chest, things like the, uh, the stone just kind of end up sitting there, which is not ideal. So we could definitely do with doing that. Uh, also, if we unlock little logistics, we do unlock the rapid hopper, which I think could be useful, especially because we're starting to back up on items in the output slot as well. It's getting to the point where occasionally the wooden hopper just isn't fast enough to keep up with all the stuff that is being produced and pumped into our jumbo furnace so this is also something we could do with unlocking again though requires yet more redstone so we're kind of just waiting on that to come in while we wait on that to come in though the lv wire coils here do look fairly straightforward they're just copper and sticks from there we can make a kinetic dynamo and then we have a choice as to how we want to generate power we can either use the water wheel or the windmill from immersive engineering Normally I go with the water wheel, but 
I'm going to go with the windmill this time just to kind of mix things up. So uh, this right here creates RF when placed in the air. I don't believe the Y level has an effect on its RF production. So we can just put this down anywhere. I think for the time being, I might slap one or two of them, uh, or maybe even three or four of them onto our tree absorber setup and try and use that as our early game source of power. To make it, we need windmill blades, which are mostly made from treated wood. Again, thankfully, we have a ton of treated wood, and then the only other thing we need is iron. So let's make a bunch of treated sticks. From there, let's see if we can't make some of these windmill blades. We need eight of them per windmill. We'll start with one windmill, but we can always make more in the future should we need them. Now, if we want to make our windmill more efficient, and I should actually be doing this in order here so as not to... Uh, miss out on certain quests because now we have to make more blades again but that's fine let's do that to get the lvy coil then the kinetic dynamo here requires eight of those so we need to make one more batch of four lvy coil from there we can then look at uh, crafting up this copper coil block easy enough and then with the copper coil block we can then look at crafting up a kinetic dynamo with one more iron and two more redstone and an aluminum as well boom boom nice and then now we actually do need to make that windmill blade again. That is fine. Again, we're almost certainly going to need more than one windmill. So we'll get uh, a second one of those. And then the windmill itself is created. If you want to produce more power with your windmill, you need to add in these windmill sails. So the way this works is that we place down the kinetic dynamo and then you place the windmill onto that kinetic dynamo. Now, let me quickly check. If I put this down, it goes down facing towards me, which is kind of perfect. And I'm pretty sure we can take the power out of the top and maybe even the bottom of that. So if I were to climb up here and then temporarily using some of our other resources, if I were to go ahead and put down the kinetic dynamo, let's say right about here, I think we could then put the windmill directly onto that. We totally can. From there, we can then uh, hopefully try and get rid of the light gray stone. It looks like, I think, Yes, we are standing on the windmill, which is good. Let's get rid of you and you. Fantastic. And now we can pull power out of the top of that. You'll see that thing is spinning. And we can pull power at the bottom, which is fantastic. And so I think it, unfortunately, <laughs> might be too close. I don't think we can put another one right next to it. I was hoping to put one right there on that block to kind of mirror this block. I guess worst case scenario, we could put one here and then potentially one on the back side there, and then one on the other side there. We could have like four of them in um, in kind of like an offset fashion going all the way around, and then try and connect all of those to power themselves. That could potentially work. We could also kind of offset them down, like have one down here and then have another up there. We could, we could do a lot of stuff depending on how many of these we actually end up needing. For now though, we do have enough redstone to get the four blocks required in order for us to actually unlock the metal press. We do need four technium, which I believe we have over in here. We do indeed, we have seven, fantastic. And so metal press, can we get this book? We definitely can. I just need one more of our blank research papers. Boom. Now, before I claim the rewards though, I should clear out my inventory just a little bit because we have a lot of stuff in here. And also I should be putting a lot of these back into their uh, respective storage drawers as and when I can. And now if I claim all of this, we should be able to just build the metal press. So currently we don't actually need a lot of what is over here. And in line with my iron pickaxe, I think I am also going to real quick craft up an iron axe as well. Again, just to make us that little bit more efficient when it comes to breaking and moving certain blocks. Specifically, we don't need this chest. We don't need this hopper. We don't need this hopper. And we currently don't need this auto crafting table here. I think temporarily I'm going to put my first metal press here just to make it easier to run power to it. So if I am not mistaken, the metal press has the redstone engineering block in the center. I then think it's two steel scaffolding like this. We then need, I believe, three conveyor belts running along the middle. Oh no, never mind. It's two conveyor belts, one here and one here. And then I think it's the heavy engineering block like this with a piston above it. The piston does need to face downwards, but I believe we can rotate that with our engineer's hammer. Never mind. I think that might work if we place the piston like face up. Nope, that also doesn't work. And so I guess in that case, what we can do, we can put a block above the piston, break the piston, and then drop it down above that. People are saying it's the uh, piston in the middle. So let me try 
this and this, and then right click the piston with the hammer, and boom, we have a metal press, nice. So we do now need to connect this metal press up to our windmill, and the easiest way, and by easiest, I mean the only way for us to do that currently, is going to be with LV wires and with LV wire connectors and relays. Now, the LV wires we've already made, these are made with copper and sticks, and then the LV wire connectors here are made with terracotta and regular copper. And then the relays are made in the same way, but just with less copper and less terracotta. Um, I'm pretty sure we can make terracotta by just smelting clay. We totally can. And I do believe that I put a fair amount of clay in here. I totally did. So over here, we can hijack this current round of smelting to get ourselves 31 terracotta, which should be more than enough, I think. And from there, we should then be able to take some of our pre-existing copper. We've got 164, that should be fine. And that should allow us to get at least one set of LV wire connectors, at least one set of LV wire relays, and then at least one set of LV wires. Now you can make the insulated version of these by utilizing some tough fabric. And that tough fabric is also what's used to make the uh, windmill sails that are going to allow us to get more power out of our windmill. And we should definitely look at doing that in just a second. For the time being though, the way this works is the LV wire connectors go onto any point where you want to give or receive power. So here, the power goes in at the top of the metal press. You want to put the wire connector like that on the top. Uh, don't want this one here. And then we want to pull that power out of the bottom of the kinetic dynamo. Now, I believe we could just right click on here with our LV wire coil. Ideally, whoops, <laughs> ideally we want to right click onto the connector. Can I hold shift here? I can, there we go. And then we want to right click again on here. And that connects, cool. Now, if we wanted to run the cable further, or if we wanted to connect to multiple things, because right now this is only powering one thing, if we wanted to power multiple things with our windmill, we would have to use these uh, LV wire relays. You'll see this is working. At the top you can see power is coming in, but uh, if I was to instead put down an LV wire relay, let's say right about there, we could then go ahead and break this, thus getting our wire back. We could then replace this, like so. We could then connect this to here, and this, to the top up here. So if we right click there, that's gonna now connect this to here, and then we can go from here to here. Nice, and the reason this is better is because now we can right click on this and connect it to other LV wire connectors to power other stuff around the base, which you can't do if you don't use the LV wire relay. Now, uh, one slight problem, I believe, is that if you do not insulate your wires, that you do run a risk of taking a little bit of damage. Now, if I go and, uh, and touch the wire, you do take a bit of damage. It's not a lot of damage because it's only a low voltage wire, but there is a little bit of an electrocution effect that happens if you uh, touch exposed wires. So, you know, not not best. Anyway, now that we have the metal press, the next thing the game wants us to make is the engineer's workbench. This is made with a treated wooden fence, some treated wooden slabs, and an engineer's crafting table, which is yet more treated wood with a regular crafting table. All of that looks Pretty doable, actually. We'll get a regular crafting table, we'll get some treated wooden slabs, we'll make the engineer's crafting table, and we'll make the engineer's workbench just as soon as we get a fence post and an iron ingot. And boom. And we'll throw this down, I guess for now, right next to our other table. Fantastic. Uh, we'll claim some of our tech book rewards. And this is going to allow us to make the metal press mold with eight steel ingots. How many steel ingots do we have? We've got nine, fantastic. So back over here, we should be able to do this to get the metal press mold for the plates. And now if we put that in here by right clicking, we can now make plates. And one of the main plates we're going to need as we saw earlier is aluminum plates. If we now drop aluminum onto the left hand side of the metal press here, that is going to get turned into an aluminum plate. Nice, and I believe we can drop all three of these on one two and three. Uh, most of them are gonna sit there until they're ready to be used. I feel like I did drop that last one, but I have no idea where it went. Did I have four? <laughs> I could have sworn I did have four. Let me get one more though, and let's throw that onto, uh, onto here to get that fourth plate. Fantastic, and then we can use that, of course, to make sheet metal. And in fact, there are quests here to get iron plates and steel plates. The uh, aluminum sheet metal is required in order to get the advanced techium, here it is, that quest is available, and then boom, there's also the quest for aluminum sheet metal as well. There we go. And so, 
Now that we have the metal press, we can also look at making uh, the gear molds, the rod molds, and the wire molds. These are going to allow us to make the gears, the rods, and the wires going forward. The gear mold, I think, is going to be the most important. And speaking of which, I think we're fully out of steel. Well, we've got one steel left, I think, now. So it's probably in our best interest to get, like, another stack of steel going. The blast furnace here is also going to start to back up on slag. We do need to kind of take that out periodically to make sure that uh, the blast furnace doesn't back up, because if it does back up, then it is going to stop producing steel, which is not what we want. The same is true, of course, as always, with the coke oven. We want to make sure we keep taking out all of the creosote and kind of getting rid of that as and when we can. I think I mentioned it in the last episode, but I think it's going to be a good idea for us to try and invest in maybe some fluid trash cans. So under basic research, there is a quest here for trash cans. It requires eight tech books, which we can definitely hand in, and then one research paper that's just four double compressed cobblestone, four technium, and a paper. The benefit of this is that I believe we can then use a fluid trash can to start deleting some of the excess creosote that we're currently making. So let me quickly see if I can't grab, you hold shift by the way, to not get moved by those conveyor belts. If I can't quickly grab four double compressed cobblestone, we're then just missing, I think, one more technium ingot, which I'm fairly certain we should be able to make. And there we go, we got a few more basic technium ingots. In fact, we could probably make more if we had more coal cook, which we totally do. Boom, boom, fantastic. And with that, we should now be able to get the trash cans yes as per usual we just need one more of these and boom nice let's go ahead and hand in that book and now if we type in trash in here you'll see that we have access to the energy trash can the item trash can the ultimate and the fluid and the fluid is kind of the one that i am most interested in here can i use colored stones i totally can let's take three of those we do not have any cobblestone in our chests here. Never mind, we totally do. It's right there, Isaac, you blind man. That's fine. Let's see, can we get a fluid trash can? Uh, the answer is definitely going to be yes, as soon as we get one iron bucket. One, two, three, boom, and boom. And so now, I think what we can do, potentially here, is maybe just use the jerry can to empty out creosote. So there's 10 buckets in here. If I right-click this on the trash can, that doesn't empty it out. If I put it in here, that does empty it out. So we can then put it back in, take out the rest of it, and then kind of throw that back in there to delete it. So that can be used to delete the creosote. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, obviously, simply due to the fact that it would be more efficient to do it basically any other way, but it does allow us to quickly get rid of all the creosote without having to back our chests up with even more treated wood, because I don't think we're going to need that much treated wood. We need a lot more cold coke than we do need treated wood going forward. And so I do think the trash can is the way to go with most of that. So let's take a look and see if we can't get some of these windmill sails down. For that, we need some industrial hemp fiber. For that, we need to grow industrial hemp seeds, which we can craft from regular wheat seeds, which shouldn't be too difficult to get. I think it should just be a case of bone mealing the grass here. And I think in terms of bone meal, the only real choice we have is to continue on with this composter that we started with many, many episodes ago. That's going to get us bone meal. That's going to allow us to grow some grass. And then that grass is going to get us seeds. We actually did get industrial hemp seeds here. And I will turn the wheat seeds into industrial hemp seeds for now, I think. My question is going to be, can we shift to make these grow faster? I was going to make an iron hoe then, but I do think our iron is somewhat valuable and i don't think we need an iron hose so if i do one two three one two three i can shift to make these grow faster that's fantastic it means i can keep shifting and we can just hold down left click to continually break all of this and just get a ton of industrial hemp fiber which is useful for a couple of things one is that you can craft this into string and then of course you can craft that string uh, into wool for string equaling one wool so we do have access to wool there on top of that though we can now look at making some of this tough fabric and this tough fabric here is then going to allow us to insulate our wires, which is useful for not getting electrified, but it's also going to allow us to make the windmill sails. For that, we do need more treated wooden sticks. That is fine. Let me uh, go ahead and, again, we're, we're really dropping items here. That's because I've left some, some copper in the furnace, which is not ideal. Let me drop <laughs> more stuff in here. We really need to get a, a better hopper on there. We'll try and get that... Uh, super fast hopper in just a second but uh, let me get yet more treated wooden sticks like so and then let's make a ton of tough fabric and then let's use that to make some windmill sails i believe we can put up to eight of these onto any given windmill to make it even faster one for each 
of the uh, the individual sales going around. So if we just right click, you'll see it starts to fill those in and the windmill actually starts to go that little bit faster. And so we should, I think, be very much able with a little bit of shifting and breaking here to get six more of those windmill sails to fully make our windmill as fast as it possibly can be and produce as much power as it's possible for one windmill to produce, which granted is not a ton of power. And again, we don't need this many seeds. I'm going to throw some of these just uh, off into the into the abyss there because we don't need a stack, two stacks of, uh, of seeds. I hope I can't craft those into um, into something more useful. I probably should have checked before I threw them off into the abyss. But either way, let's do this and this. That gets us three. What are we missing? We're just missing more fiber. And there we go. We now have a fully upgraded windmill with all of the sails. And you'll see it's going substantially faster than it was previously, which is significantly more satisfying than the slower windmill. And of course, we can build more of those going forward if we want to get even more power for our machines. Speaking of machines, we can claim our tech book here. The bottling plant is, I think, really maybe one of the only things standing between us and actually getting at least one advanced technium here, because we now have the ability to make aluminum sheet metal. And I think we have enough aluminum to make all of the aluminum sheet metal that we need here. We have steel coming in over here. We do need to get some steel gears. And for that, we do need to get the gear mold. For that, we need steel plates. So I'll make one steel plate because I don't quite know the recipe yet. But if we do this, kaplunk, we're going to get our first steel plate. That is a quest complete. And then, oh, I see. We also need to make the engineer's blueprint for metal press molds. Three paper, three blue dye, one iron plate. Also, not going to be a problem. Iron we still have coming in, nice and fast. Let's do one of these. That gets us the iron plate. And then from there, we just need three paper, which as we've seen many times before here, we, we actually already have and we can make from uh, leaves. So, blueprint. We want the blueprint for molds, which is this one. Uh, we are missing four, uh, by four, we are missing three blue dye, which we can get from three lapis, and boom. And this is where we need this uh, previously made engineer's workbench because now we can use this to make the gear mold for the metal press. It needs three steel plates and one set of engineer's wire cutters. The engineer's wire cutters require one iron ingot and two sticks. That is super easy. I don't actually know if they need to be treated sticks or not. I know it did show treated sticks in the recipe, but sometimes that is uh, just how it looks. And if you wait long enough, it will flip to normal sticks. And so back over here, let's do uh, three plates, right? Yes, three steel plates, okay. One, two, three. You can also hop her in, by the way, to either side of this, and you can put a chest on the end or a drawer or anything like that, and uh, the belts here will push into those inventories, which is good. Over here, I don't believe the wire cutters are used, so boom and boom. They're not. They just use a little bit of durability. Now, we can get rid of this, put on the gear press, and I believe we're going to need one, two, three, four steel ingots to make one steel gear. And if we're going to make our very first advanced technium ingot, we need four steel gears, which we can totally make. One, two, three, four, gonna get us another. One, two, three, four is gonna get us our third. And then one, two, three, four is gonna get us our fourth steel gear, which is all of the steel gears that we're going to need for that first advanced technium. Perfect. Uh, our inventory is getting a little full. I kinda wanna go and deposit some of this uh, clay that we have back into its respective clay drawer. But uh, now I think, as I mentioned a second ago, the only thing that we're really missing here is Invar, we can unlock down here by getting the research paper for nickel. That's going to allow us to get nickel ore, which in turn allows us to get nickel ingots. And Invar is just an alloy between nickel and iron. This research paper here is not too bad. It needs four blocks of aluminum, four basic technium, and another research paper. All of that we have. So if I go and quickly grab 36 more aluminum. Again, I'm assuming we have over 100 in here. Again, I'm going to do a quick one of these. Boom, boom and boom, boom, just to keep all of this running smoothly. Let's take some of you. Let's make four aluminum blocks. One, two, three, four. We'll drop the rest of the aluminum for now back in over here. The technium we have, and of course the blank paper we have over here. It's our last one, but that is completely fine. Can I get some nickel? I totally can, nice. And of course, now the same process as before. We can go back up to our all's our us, we can turn off redstone and we can leave on nickel. And using our prospector's pick, we can throw down a couple of these. 
We can break all of them once we've maybe cleared a little bit of inventory space. Another thing we could look at uh, unlocking is iron chests, which would give us access to bigger chests, which I think could be uh, quite useful here. Uh, that is probably going to be more than we need. And of course, from our somewhat janky setup earlier, we do now have a backlog of stone available to us over here. We've got 218 stone. We can grab it on the way around. Fantastic. I uh, don't need the redstone here, but I can deposit that into my uh, jumbo furnace as we go around. Let me uh, stop procrastinating on that jumbo furnace real quick. Let me make these nickel ore. We only needed 36. We've got 37. That's perfect. And uh, let me quickly replace this here. So the other thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to get another four redstone blocks to allow us to make the next paper for little logistics the little logistics paper here does also require some rails that is completely fine i'll put the redstone back we'll take one two three four five six iron and one stick boom and then for the next blank research paper we just need more regular paper and we have more than enough fantastic let's do one of these and then one of those cool what this is going to allow us to do is unlock little logistics which i think is going to be useful but it's also going to give us access to the fast hopper the rapid hopper this one right here it is a little pricey it requires two basic technium ingots a block of redstone and an iron hopper which is a little pricey let me take five iron here let's make a normal hopper because i think for the top of this a normal hopper is probably going to work just fine so what i'm thinking here is if we replace this with just this that's going to allow us to deposit, ideally not the nickel, but everything else into here. And that gives us just a little bit of a buffer for all of the stuff coming in here. Because for the most part, everything should make its way in fairly easily. Uh, what is blocking up down here? It's light gray stone. I'm not quite sure how we ended up with light gray stone in there. But uh, everything else should just keep backing up in here as opposed to spewing out on top of the jumbo furnace. And then my idea here is to get the rapid hopper, which is going to require one, two, three, four, five more iron in order to get the stuff out of the jumbo furnace at a reasonably fast rate for that i am going to need one two three four five six seven eight nine redstone to get one more block of redstone uh, but that should be i think everything for the speedy hopper and then if we say goodbye to our wooden hopper here we should be able to then we did lose one smooth stone there but that's fine we should be able to then put down the rapid hopper, which should start to move these substantially faster. Look at that. It is moving so quick compared to the snail-like speed of the wooden hopper. This is uh, is very nice indeed. You love to see it. And so now we can claim our uh, reward here. Now, let us see if we cannot get a minor setup for nickel, which I think is going to be another tier 5 situation. It is, yeah. So we need 32 more tier 5 support for him but we actually only need 19 because we already have one tier 5 support for him down chat has made a good point that we should probably fix this belt here um i think all we need to do is um break this and then replace it um in the right place so if we put it down here and uh, rotate that of course to face into the hopper now that's gonna work okay cool right that didn't work previously but that's that's fine we can dump everything else into there that should make its way down slowly but surely into the furnace as and when it can and yeah hopefully <laughs> hopefully that's gonna work again there's a bit of a backlog at the minute i think that's mostly because of the fact that i just uh kind of left everything where it was we should probably just replace this with another speedy hopper once we get uh, two more technium but i think this is fine we could put a chest on top of the hopper as well which might not be a terrible idea it does kind of feel like kicking the can down the road a little bit but i love me a good bit of can kicking and so let me quickly do one of these that should allow this to act as a buffer if the uh hopper there gets too full and so uh, we'll leave that as it is for now and let's go and get that miner going for nickel all right and once again you get the gist by now we have our nickel draw here all the way around the corner we've got all of our nickel or underneath a tier five miner or well, the miners the tier one miner i guess but the uh the frame is tier five i haven't put any capstones on that just yet we could make it faster with aluminum capstones but for the time being that is, uh, is just there. I do wonder if something like Invar Capstones might be even quicker. They're the same as aluminum, which is interesting. So unlike the other alloys that we've been making up until now, 
Invar, unfortunately, can't be made in the Jumbo Furnace. It has to be made in the Alloy Kiln. Or the Arc Furnace, but the Arc Furnace is a ways away for us. The Alloy Kiln here, thankfully, is not too difficult to make. To make it, you need 8 Kiln Brick, which is just sandstone and brick. Brick, we do have in relative abundance. I'm going to do a quick inventory clear here with what I can, because we are running very short on, uh, on inventory space. But uh, brick we have here, and then, of course, uh, sand we are making in our sand mine around the corner. And so getting eight of the kiln bricks should be pretty easy. The only downside, of course, is that it's nowhere near as fast uh, as the jumbo furnace. So I need eight of these. Uh, that is not how you make sandstone. That is how you make sandstone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Okay, we'll drop that back into the drawer. And then back over here, we should be able to make the eight kiln brick, and it's kind of like a smaller version of the uh, the coke oven and the blast furnace. Basically, you put down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. You right click again with the engineer's hammer, and you get this tiny little two by two machine, which we can put in nickel and iron. So it's uh, two iron for every one nickel. So one, two, three, four, five, and six for three nickel. Of course, then it does require fuel. Speaking of fuel, let me do a quick one of these and this will also take that out just to free up some space even though again we are kind of light on space everywhere else but uh, if we take uh, i guess we can put some cold coke in here actually it is more efficient if we do this then is going to start smelting all of this into i believe nine invar ingots and uh, it looks like we do get some uh, nickel as a reward there which is uh, it's quite nice i'll put that back in the drawer for the time being and yeah that's going to get us some invar we only need uh, a total of eight in order to make our first advanced technium ingot and so now the real final thing that we don't have is a bottle of lava so for that we need the bottling machine has been been really nice to us and given us the stuff he hasn't i was hoping that um much like with the metal press he might have given us the stuff for the bottling machine he hasn't done that but that might be fine so what we do need to do we do need to make the bottling machine and uh, if we check the recipe here it does tell us if we click up here the things we need to make the bottling machine so we need one fluid pump we need two iron sheet metal one redstone engineering block one light engineering block three steel scaffolding and three conveyor belts the conveyor belts we have that's easy enough the iron sheet metal is just four iron plates so one two three four we'll drop all of those in here we do have to make sure we swap out our gear mold for the plate mold again obviously eventually it would be ideal if we could get multiple different metal presses so that we can have one for gears, one for plates, one for rods, and one for wires. But for the time being, we can do something like this, and that's going to get us the sheet metal. Nice. Then I'm going to go ahead and make another double chest here to give us space to kind of do this <laughs> so we can free up even more space in our inventory. Uh, we do have the engineer's manual here as well, which does also tell us how to make the bottling machine and it's a bit nicer because you can kind of uh, utilize uh, this to kind of get a, a better visualization of how this needs to be built it is very small here but we can uh, we can work with that so back over here though we have the conveyor belts that's fine steel scaffolding is steel ingots and steel rods the steel rods you can make in a crafting table and in fact it's actually the same efficiency so i feel like we might as well do this and then from there we should be able to make some steel scaffolding six is enough and so we can get rid of that we've got the iron sheet metal that's fine in terms of the fluid pump we need three more iron plates along with six more iron plates to make the fluid pipes along with two more iron plates so that gets us a total of 11 iron plates i want to say and so it's at this point that it's probably well worth investing in yet another hopper doing something like this and potentially also something like this so that we can then drop in 11 iron and we don't have to be there ready to catch it as it uh, kind of stumbles off the edge of the metal press. And whilst we wait for that to come in, we can look at the redstone engineering block. This needs one copper for redstone and some of that iron sheet metal. We might have to make more of that because we have, I think, only gotten four. Yeah, so we're gonna have to make more iron plates. That is not surprising. Seemingly everything requires iron plates. Thankfully, you do get 
four of those. I'll put four more in here so we can get even more. But then again, another four is going to be required because we also need four iron sheet metal to make the light engineering blocks. And this also requires even more iron plates to make even more mechanical components. So we need four, five of these iron mechanical components, which is 10 iron plates and a few copper. So if we come over here, for this, we're going to need a different blueprint. Right now we're using the mold blueprint, but we need the crafting components blueprint, which is more paper, more blue dye, and then copper, aluminum, and iron. That is fine. Copper, aluminum, and iron. Paper, we might still have. We do it to my inventory. Isaac, you fool. And then lapis, we of course have over here. One, two, three, and boom. That should be everything for the crafting components blueprint. This isn't strictly necessary. You can make the crafting components in the crafting table, but here it's four iron plates and one copper gets you one component. Whereas if you do it in the workbench, it requires half the amount of iron. So it's just that little bit more efficient. So if we swap that out, we can put in 10 iron plates with the copper ingots and get the five iron mechanical components. We can then grab the plethora of iron plates that we made. We do need to get at least two more lots of iron sheet metal. Uh, one of those is for the light engineering block, which is now done. And we then need to make the fluid pipes, which again, it looks like I did somewhat miscalculate the number of uh, iron plates required here. And I think we're gonna need three more on top of that, actually, now that I think about it. We'll take you out. We'll use you to make our first batch of fluid pipes. And then as soon as we have our third plate, that should hopefully be everything for the fluid pump, which should complete the quest for the bottling machine. And then, I think we're good to go, right? We have the light engineering block, and in fact, we can check in the manual because the manual will show us the ticks if we have everything, which we do, cool. So if we hit pause here and we take a look at this, we need to put this down and we need to figure out where we're gonna put it down. I kind of want to move this unlimited water source because it's in a bit of an awkward position. And so real quick, I might make two regular iron buckets here and then uh, go ahead and move this so we can place down the um, the bottling plant there. Again, we do just want it to be closer to our power source. I don't want to build it too, too far away. So we'll get rid of you. And if we grab our pickaxe, we can uh, get rid of the stone. Someone did point out that the uh, prospector's pick is actually a pretty good pickaxe to use just regularly because it has a high durability and can also mine up to diamond, apparently, which I don't know if that's intended or not, but that's kind of crazy. Either way, <laughs> over here, let us see if we can't get this bottling plant down. So level one has the redstone engineering block at the front. Uh, I'll put it here, I think, along with the three steel scaffolding that's going to go here, here, and here. Then it looked like an iron sheet metal there, and I think a light engineering block on the other side. But let me check that. It was indeed. Boom. And then as for level two, it is three conveyor belts along the front with what I assume is the pump in the middle, another sheet metal, and another light engineering block. So this, this, and then I think the pump is gonna go there with the three conveyor belts going along like this. And it even tells you in the book that uh, to form it, you right click on the central conveyor belt. Is that everything? It is. I, it's weird the way it shows this because it shows it as a third layer, but this is uh, part of the pump there. So if we take our engineer's hammer, boom, we have a bottling machine, nice. So I believe this does require glass bottles, I think. <laughs> um, I don't think it produces glass bottles, although I could be wrong on that. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Okay, that's completely fine, though. If we quickly eat some apples, we should be able to grab as much sand as we want and just smelt that very quickly in our jumbo furnace into glass. And then as for lava, there are a few things that we need to bear in mind. There is this guy right here, the fluid absorber. It says the fluid absorber is a machine that will create a fluid. See the miners guide book for more information. Essentially, much like what we're doing with the current miners here, where we place ores beneath the miner and it produces unlimited ores going forward, you can do the exact same thing utilizing the fluid absorber with lava, but you need 36 buckets of lava and you have to place all 36 buckets of lava beneath the fluid absorber for it to work. So that is definitely something we're going to do. 
The fluid absorber itself, not particularly fast. It doesn't produce a bucket of lava every time. It only produces 100 millibuckets of lava every time. And so by default, it produces 100 millibuckets of lava every 220 ticks, the same amount of time that the miners take, which is 100 millibuckets every 11 seconds. And so it's going to take like um, 110 seconds to get one bucket's worth, which is not fast at all. The way that you craft lava, though, is just with clay and redstone which is super easy because we already have, I think, some excess buckets. We actually already have a, a bucket of lava available. And I thought I made, I did, I made loads of these uh, unfired ceramic buckets. Although I do want to check. Oh no, hold on. I don't know why I took this out as if like, I don't need this. I'm making this. Let me go and put this in here. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, um, let's. Ooh, let's do. Actually, let's do, um, let's do this. I really thought that was going to make obsidian for me. Oh no, it's because they, they waterlogged, which I completely forgot. <laughs> um. Okay, anyway. <laughs> we, um, we... Do have our two buckets of water. Let's not lose those, that would be real bad. Instead, let's go back over here and let's quickly hijack this to get 15 more buckets. And then we should be able to do something like this, to get us a lot of lava. Now, I'm not gonna craft all those just yet because that would fill my inventory. The thing we next need to figure out is how are we going to get the lava into the bottler if we can't just right-click it on because that is gonna be tricky. Okay, so it looks like we are gonna have to get another one of the immersive engineering pumps if we want to make this work. So thankfully, those are not too difficult to make. The pump itself, as we saw before, is just more pipes. We do need one more iron mechanical component. That is also not going to be a problem. Let me put uh, two more iron in there for uh, two more of the iron plates. I need one copper to make one more component. Fantastic. And then those two extra iron plates are going to give me the three iron plates I need to make the pump. So from there, I need some kind of tank. Do I have to use the fluid tank from immersive engineering? All right, so never mind. We don't actually need this pump. I'm sure we'll find a use for it at some point in the future. But what we can actually do here is we can once again use a little bit of the little logistics mod because this mod actually adds a fluid hopper, which I thought you could only use to pump into and out of the uh, trains and boats from little logistics. But it turns out that's not the case. And so if we quickly get a hopper and then we craft that with some glass, we get a fluid hopper. From there, we should be able, I'm told, to put that down in such a way, I think we have to put it down like this, that the little kind of uh, extrusion there points at the input on the bottling machine. The input is either of these blue sides. And then now if I right click lava onto this, that's gonna take the lava and put it in the bottling machine. You'll see it's up there at the top. And so now over here, we can of course do this. We can start taking these buckets of lava. We can start placing them into the fluid hopper. And then from there, we can, of course, craft up a couple of glass bottles like this. Again, I think we might need another hopper because I think we do have to... Uh, I don't think you can just place items into the bottling machine. I think everything has to be pumped in. So I think we might have to do something like this to give it glass bottles, at which point I would hope that as soon as we give it power, this will work. So power-wise, we need some more stuff here. We need to put another LV wire connector on here. And then again, we could connect from here directly to that LV wire relay, but I think it is gonna look a little nicer if we do something like this and have like a little bit of an intermediary LV wire relay and then do this. And in theory, that should maybe begin doing the trick unless the glass bottles go here. That makes a lot more sense, Isaac. Okay, cool. And if we had inventory space, we'd be able to pick that up, which would be Real nice. Let me uh, see if I can grab that. Fantastic. Okay, so I think that we have basically everything we need. Our invar is over here. We've got nine. We only need eight. And so over here, if we swap to recipe number two, I think we can start putting some of this stuff in. So the lava bottles, we need four of them. Yes, four of them. We already have one. I think it's only 250 millibuckets of lava per bottle. Oh, never mind. It's only 200 millibuckets of lava per bottle. That's fine. We'll put down a few more of those. Again, you can use the, uh, the hoppers either side and the chests. And so this hopper wasn't a complete waste. We can, in fact, move it over to here and we can pump the, uh, you know, bottles through there into here and put a chest on the end 
like this to make more of these lava bottles going forward. Fantastic. Let's do you, you, and you. I think we do have one basic technium available. We do indeed. We'll throw that in there. Then the steel gears we made, one, two, three, and four. The invar we have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Fantastic. And at that point, we just need eight aluminum sheet metal. We did make some aluminum sheet metal at the start of the episode, so we already have one, two, three, four. We just need four more of this aluminum, which we can throw in here. That's going to get us four more aluminum sheet metal. And chat is right. I should toggle this off so we can save the recipe. That's a good idea. We'll take this. We'll go one, two, three, four. And we'll go one, two, three, four. We'll shift left click here so that if we want to auto craft with this in the future, we can. And uh, now we can just take this out. Nice. And we have our first advanced technium. And I really don't think it's going to be too difficult for us to make more of this. The aluminum sheet metal is super easy to make. The steel, we actually have enough steel to make more steel gears. So we could make more of this. And then we can make this all pretty quickly with the crude blast furnace. Uh, everything else is also pretty doable. The lava, super easy. Next time we will come back and uh, set up the fluid absorber to get more lava passively. If we ever need lava quickly, doing this way with the, the buckets and the redstone is quick, but uh, having lava coming in passively is gonna save us having to use our redstone in the future, which would be fantastic. And then of course, it's just a case of making more invar, which we're getting the iron and nickel, that's not gonna be hard. And just making the basic technium, which We've basically got all the resources to make. Um, now we could do with looking at trying to automate the coke oven potentially. Again, an assembler could help with that because then we could try and look at... Um, although actually, I think the, the pump we have here could help with that. We could potentially use this fluid pump to take the uh, creosote and just pump it directly into the fluid trash can, which could be a better way of working with things. And from there, we could maybe just hop a coal in and um, coal cook out, which I think would be the uh, the best way of automating that. In, uh, in the short term, but next time we'll come back. I think we'll make a few more uh, advanced technium. We'll get that fluid absorber up and running to get unlimited lava. We will look at uh, working on the base. Between streams, I might do some work on um, kind of replacing some of the wood that we have around and uh, building out some new platform stuff to try and make this place look a little bit nicer. But I think the big thing that I want to work on at the start of the next episode is going to be unlocking the simple storage networks mod now that we have the ability to make Technium, because that is going to allow us to much more easily access all of our stored items, including all of the stuff inside of our storage door system and craft with it wirelessly anywhere in the world without having to run around and rummage through all of our current storage uh, interfaces to find whatever item or block it is that we're specifically after. But that is, of course, as always, a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Techopolis 2 there.